those whom God predestined, he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified, and those whom he justified, he also glorified. Some theologians interpret this verse to mean that God decreed in eternity past to save certain human beings and to let all the rest go to hell. They explain that God predestined to save elect individuals before he created the world. Without arguing for or against that theology, I shall try to assess whether this verse actually teaches what those theologians say about it. To do so, I appeal to the text's immediate context along with a point of Greek grammar. I shall not appeal to an alternative theological system. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. We observe that this text deals with believers who are already called, for whom all these things are working together in the present time. God's purpose may come from eternity past, but his outworking is in the present time. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. In this context, God's foreknowledge of believers does not date from eternity past, but from before those believers are conformed to the image of his Son. Although the verbs foreknew and predestined are translated as a past tense in English, implying time past, yet the Greek verbs have the aorist tense, which does not imply time. Thus the time of foreknew must be limited to that of the context in verse 28, which remains in the present time. The verb might be is in the Greek present tense, which is also taken to be in present time, extending into future time. Thus we may legitimately translate verse 29 to say, For those whom he foreknows, he is also predestining to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might remain the firstborn within a large family. Those whom he predestined, he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified, and those whom he justified, he also glorified. English translations of verse 30 employ past tenses, predestined, called, justified, and glorified. English readers, however, wonder how glorified can have a past tense since believers alive today have not yet been glorified. Well, all the verbs in verse 30 have the Greek aorist tense, which has no time of its own, but draws its time from surrounding verses. Here the aorist serves to state a general truth about God leading believers to glory without reference to eternity past. Thus we may legitimately translate verse 30 to say, Those whom he predestines he also calls, and those whom he calls he also justifies, and those whom he justifies he will also glorify. Since the purpose of the passage is to teach that we are more than victorious through him who loves us, verse 37, it says nothing for or against the possibility of an individual believer to apostatize, to leave the faith, and so to be lost. Therefore, 
if we stay faithful to Jesus, then God will bring us through to glory when Jesus returns to earth, raising us from death to life to enjoy him forever.